Are you sure life originated on Earth? Comfortable conditions on our planet have helped evolution. But where did the very first organic molecule come from? A stunning finding could break the whole idea of life in the universe wide open. Researchers have been able to detect complex sugars, the most important components of living organisms, in meteorites. Does this mean that scientists have solved the mystery of the origin of life on Earth and found the source of all living things? Some scientists believe life arose here spontaneously under certain favorable conditions. Others are convinced that the molecules of life were brought from outer space. A new study of meteorites supports the cosmic version of the origin of life. In 1806, at the height of the Napoleonic Wars, a meteorite fell near the French town of Alès. This was three years after meteorites were officially recognized by the French Academy of Sciences. Some of the fragments of meteorite Alès were lost, yet after 28 years, one was collected and stored in the laboratory of famous Swedish chemist Jans Jakob Berzelius. At first, he didn't even believe it was a cosmic body. Meteorite Alès contained an organic mass soluble in water. When heated, its particles drifted and charred. A clear sign of the presence of organic substances, carbon compounds. All known life forms on our planet are built from such compounds. Berzelius first described carbonaceous chondrites as a new type of stone meteorite. Their name indicates a structural feature where chondrule is present in the stone, small rounded silicate grains, as well as carbon. On Earth, Carbonaceous chondrites are sparse, less than 5% of all meteorites. They are ordinary black stones that can easily be mistaken for a piece of asphalt. For scientists, carbonaceous chondrites are the most valuable meteorites, but finding them is very rare. Carbonaceous chondrites are very fragile. With just your fingers, you can grind them into powder. Therefore, they're easily destroyed traveling through Earth's atmosphere. Once they hit the planet, meteorites, as a rule, disappear without a trace, mixing with terrestrial rocks. It's no surprise that only two dozen carbonaceous chondrites have been found and preserved in the world. In 1969, Carbonaceous chondrites weighing more than 100 kilograms or 220 pounds fell in Australia near the village of Murchison. Its pieces, weighing from 680 grams to 7 kilograms or 1.5 to 15 pounds, scattered across 13,000 square kilometers, about 5,000 square miles. Fragments were collected and transferred to scientists for research. It turned out some of its particles are almost 3 billion years older than the sun. Scientists from the German Institute of Ecological Chemistry, led by Philipp schmidt Koplin, discovered 14,000 organic compounds in a meteorite in 2010. Of these, 70 are amino acids. The Murchison meteorite was recognized as the most alive of all that have fallen to Earth. Philippe schmidt Copland is convinced that it contains many more organic molecules, maybe millions. But so far, scientists haven't found them all due to limited means. After nine years, at the end of 2019, a team of American and Japanese scientists conducted a new study of the Murchison meteorite. For the first time, astrobiologists reliably detected complex sugars, xylose, lyxose, and arabinose. But the main find was ribose. This sugar is a key component of ribonucleic acid, RNA. RNA is found in the cells of all living organisms. It serves as an intermediary, copying genetic information from DNA and transmitting it for protein synthesis. Ribose was also found in another carbonaceous chondrite, discovered in Africa in 2001. Research leader Yoshihiro Furukawa of Tohoku University believes extraterrestrial ribose could have led to the formation of RNA molecules and the origin of life on Earth. Found in meteorites older than the sun, 
it can be assumed such celestial bodies could have supplied organic molecules to Earth at the birth of the solar system. Remember, organic compounds have been found in meteorites before, including sugar, though each time these discoveries were criticized in the scientific world. Some argued that the samples could be contaminated with organic matter from Earth. Therefore, scientists led by Yoshihiro Furukawa had to not only detect ribose, but also prove its extraterrestrial origin. Key evidence was the isotopic composition of carbon. It's known that earthly life prefers light carbon-12 to heavier carbon-13. Here, analysis showed that sugar from the meteorites was never part of living cells. To confirm their results, scientists are awaiting the return of space missions to asteroids Bennu and Ryugu. They'll deliver soil from the surfaces of these cosmic bodies. Both asteroids are carbonaceous chondrites. The American interplanetary station OSIRIS-REx was sent to asteroid Bennu in 2016. In August 2020, it will take soil from its surface and, in 2023, deliver it to Earth. Samples from another asteroid, Ryugu, are already on their way to Earth on Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa 2. It's expected on Earth at the end of 2020. Soil from both asteroids may contain organic molecules. Since they'll be delivered to Earth by spacecraft, the risk of them mixing with organic terrestrial substances has been eliminated. Scientists will get clean samples. But where did complex sugars in space come from? An international team of researchers has answered this. Experts calculated the chemical reaction in the formation of organic molecules that could occur in space on the surface of asteroids. By reproducing this, scientists obtained a sugar composition similar to those in meteorites. However, astrophysicists have long been finding organic molecules in cosmic space. Thanks to spectral analysis, they found organic compounds on Mars, methane ice on Pluto, and methane ethane, and even acetylene on Saturn's largest satellite, Titan. But the discovery of organic matter in space does not indicate the existence of life on these objects. Such molecules can form from chemical reactions without living organisms. However, the detection of ribose in meteorites could be the key to determining the origin of life on Earth. Perhaps we'll find out what started it all. At the heart of life on Earth are DNA and RNA macromolecules, nucleic acids, as well as proteins. To build an organism means to produce its proteins only in the right place, at the right time, in the right amount. It is DNA that stores information about the structure of proteins and about when, where, and how many will be synthesized. When constructing proteins using a DNA matrix, the mediator, RNA, plays a huge role. Cells create both RNA and DNA with the help of enzymes, proteins that facilitate the attachment of the components of nucleic acids to one another. In the 1970s, biologists discovered that some RNAs could catalyze this process, that is, reproduce it themselves. So, the hypothesis of the RNA world arose. According to this theory, at the dawn of life, RNA copied itself and did so without protein. Later, proteins joined the process and DNA turned into the main gear of heredity. The detection of ribose in meteorites was another argument in favor of this idea regarding the development of life on Earth. The Murchison meteorite fell more than half a century ago, but it still holds puzzles. Of the 70 amino acids that scientists have found in it, only 19 are found on Earth. What if the biggest discoveries are yet to come, and we finally understand how life appeared and how much of it is in the universe. Perhaps this one small molecule arriving on a meteorite is enough. And what version of the origin of life on Earth do you adhere to? If you like the video, 
give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to be notified of new videos. Until next time.